Well, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, in my last video, I said I was going to show you how I installed my side windows in the Super Duty fuselage. And the video is getting too long to include that. So that's going to be this video. So in this video, I will show you how I installed the side windows in the Super Duty, although they are not permanently installed yet. They're just clico in place, but they're all ready to install. I also just got back from a nice evening flight in the cruiser where I went up to set different power settings and see what kind of speed and fuel burns I was getting at those power settings. So if you're interested in that, that will be the next video. On the passenger side of the airplane here, you can see that I have the two windows uh, installed or it clicoed in place. Now, this back window here, all you need to do is clico it in place and it's ready to go. But these windows here, and this is the same thing I've noticed on my cruiser. These windows here need a little bit of work to fit in here. The back of the window, I needed to trim off about an eighth of an inch on, of the window on the back. And I needed to trim about an eighth of an inch off of the front. And that is to let it fit between this piece here and this piece. It's a little bit too wide to fit in there, so it does have to be shaved down a little bit. Well, the first thing I'm going to do with this window is peel off a little bit of this protective covering. This, actually, this side of the window will be the inside, so I only want to peel it off just enough to clear the rivets because I, when I rivet it on, obviously I don't want to rivet the plastic. So I'm going to peel it back all along the perimeter here. And now what I'm going to do is take an X-Acto blade and then just slice this off. Now on this side of the window, it's a there's still a protective covering on here, but it's actually kind of hard to see because it's, it's clear. But what I'm going to do on here is basically the same thing if I can actually get to it. But I'm going to peel a lot more of this off because I will tape this window off once it's installed on the airplane for painting. So here we go, I'm kind of doing the same thing, but I'm just peeling a little bit more off. You could peel it completely off if you want to and then just tape it up for painting, but I figured whatever I leave on there is a little bit less I have to mask off. So there we go. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is, well, I've already fit this in the airplane, so I already know that I have to trim the edges. So that's the first thing is to fit it in the airplane. See if you need to trim the edges. Maybe for some reason you don't have to. Uh, I do know on this window that it, I have to trim about an eighth of an inch off the back and an eighth of an inch off the front. So that's what I'll do next. Now I want to grind about an eighth of an inch off of here, so I need a nice straight line. And what I've noticed for me, it easier than drawing a line on here with a pen is I'm going to use a piece of tape to mark that line. You know, one thing I hate about masking tape is trying to find the end of it. I think it's, I think it's right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a piece long enough. And I'm going to put it on here so that the edge by my thumbs here is just an eighth of an inch from the edge of the window. And now it's probably hard to see in the camera, but I have a, a line marked here with the edge of the tape. I can grind this off and then uh, do the same thing to the front. Now there's probably a lot of different ways that you can do this. The way I like to do it is with this little sanding drum on the Dremel, and I'll just take the drum and go along the edge here and grind that off. And I'm going to hold a shop vac with it too because that'll help collect some of the dust.
Here's what it looks like as I'm grinding it. You can see I just grind it down right to the tape and that gets me a straight line the length of the window. And I just do about an inch and a half at a time and just keep working my way down. Now because I use this tape as a straight edge, I've got a nice straight line on here, but obviously it's not going to be perfect, right? If I run my finger around there or along there, I can, I can feel little ridges. You're not going to get a perfectly straight line going over it with that. So what I'll do now is I'll take the tape off and I'll use a sanding block to make this perfectly straight. I can run my finger along here now and feel that there's no ridges. It's perfectly nice and straight. Now this first pass, I just used 60 grit paper, but you're going to want to make sure you kind of polish this edge. So next I'll use a hundred and then 220 or something like that. And I'll, I'll finish up with 500 to get it smooth. But for right now, that's all I want to do just to see if it fits in the airplane. Uh, I'll do this first and then it should fit. Once I know that it fits, I can polish all the edges nice and smooth. All right, I have now cut off about an eighth of an inch from the front and the back. And now I will see if it fits in the airplane. Now it does fit enough that I was able to put it in and Clico it, but what I notice is the back edge there is right up against that bulkhead. And I wanna leave a little bit of a space in there because that will give that Lexan window a little flexibility in how it can expand and contract. If it's, right, if it's pressed right up tight against there and that window tries to expand in the heat, that's when you might start to get cracks around your rivets. So I think what I'm going to do is remove that window and trim about another 16th of an inch off the back. Well, I've trimmed about another 16th of an inch off the back here. So I will put it back in the airplane and I think it will work perfectly now. All right, if we can peek around the back here, I know you're not gonna be able to tell, but there's a little bit of a gap between the window and that bulkhead, and I like it. It's perfect. The window fits nicely in the airplane now. The front and the back edges are both trimmed. And the next step will be to sand these edges with finer and finer sandpaper until they have a nice, smooth, polished edge. Now at that point, we're almost ready to install the window, but there's one more thing that we're going to want to do. And that is open up these holes. These holes are drilled to an eighth of an inch and there's an eighth inch rivet that goes through those holes. And you might think that would work perfectly, but if you put an eighth inch rivet through an eighth inch hole in this Lexan, that can eventually lead to cracks in the Lexan because it's riveted in there really tight. And as this heats up and cools down in different temperatures and it wants to expand and contract, if it's held in there tightly with the, the rivets, uh, it, it doesn't give it room to expand and contract and that's when you can start to see cracks along your rivets. And that goes for any of the plastic. So whether you're building your doors or this top windshield here, you always want the holes in the plastic or acrylic or Lexan, whatever it is, uh, to be a little bit larger than the rivet. So when you put a rivet in this hole, you should be able to wig wiggle that rivet just a little bit. 
These are the rivets that come with the kit for the windows. These are soft aluminum rivets. They are not the same A4 and A5 rivets that we've been using to build the airplane. These ones here are 1 8 inch and these ones here are 5 30 seconds. In this bag here, these rivets are used for the back window and these a little bit larger 5 30 seconds rivets are used for the glass on the doors. I have a scrap piece of plastic here that I've drilled a number 27 hole, which is about a 964. So just a little bit bigger than eighth inch. This is one of our eighth inch rivets. And if I put it in this hole, it just wiggles just a little bit, just enough to where the rivet isn't real tight in there. I think that's a pretty good size for the hole. I think that's what I'm going to use for the rest of the windows. I don't think there's any real science on what size to drill that hole. Like I said, I just like to make it a little bit bigger than a rivet so I can put the rivet in the hole and just have it wiggle just a little bit. Well, my next step now is just to open up all of the holes on the perimeter of the windows to, with that number 27 drill bit. All right, I have drilled out all of these holes and I have a rivet sitting in here. And again, I can just wiggle this rivet in that hole just a little bit. And I think really the purpose of doing this I, th I think this is why we drill these bigger, is because when we squeeze these rivets, they actually expand and get larger. So it's gonna hold in that hole really, really tight. And I think the pressure of that rivet uh, kind of expanding as you pull it is what puts pressure on these holes and can lead to cracks. And I think that's why we just drill a little bit bigger hole. The rivet doesn't sit as tight in the plastic and I think that's what leads to uh, less cracks. Anyway, that's what I've been doing on all of the airplanes that I've ever built, and I've never once ever had a single crack in any of my windows. I should probably knock on wood after saying that. <laughs> There's one final step we need to do before we can install this window, and that is deburr the holes, because just like aluminum, when you drill these holes, I mean, I've got a pretty big burr on all of these holes that needs to be removed. This deburring tool, which is the exact same tool I use for all the aluminum holes, works perfect on this. And all it takes is just one little turn and it makes it nice and smooth. It completely takes off the burrs on there. All right, now that window I was just working on is all ready to go. The holes are drilled, they're deburred. I do have to finish sanding the edges where I trimmed it. I wanna really polish those and make it, the edges nice and smooth. All I have to do now is take out these two windows and the one on the other side, drill the holes to the little bit bigger size with that number 27 bit. This window here, I do have to polish the front and back edge where I trimmed it, but all that's a relatively quick job. So I'll take these windows out, I'll get that done, and then these windows will be completely ready to rivet into the fuselage. But I mentioned on the previous video, I don't wanna rivet these in until that top window is installed, just because these are nice big access holes to help me install that top window. Now, speaking of that top window, it does get glued in, and I bought the recommended glue that Zenith recommends. I ordered this from Amazon, and you can see how it arrived. <laughs> they just package it in a padded envelope, but the, so the tip of it now is broke and the glue is gushing out. So I've got to send this back to Amazon. They're going to send me another one, which is fine because I go back to work anyway. So I'm not going to work on this in the next day or two. So by the time I get back from my trip, I'll have a new tube of glue that hopefully won't be broken and I'll be able to get that top window installed. After that's installed, I'll rivet these in. I'll lay up the fiberglass on the fairings in the back. And then uh, maybe once it gets a little bit warmer, I'll have this airplane ready for paint.